Hi guys, hope wherever you are and whatever you've been doing, you've had a sensational day. Tonight, we're gonna to be sharing three ways to help boost your children's immune system. Now, you may have already heard of gut microbiota from either your doctor, a dietitian, a local chemist, family member or very possibly from the internet but the question is what's the deal with it you know like why are the hype and uh, it's a very hot topic at the moment in the area of research so we're going to be discussing that tonight you know it's really no surprise that there's becoming more and more information about this online so our gut microbiota actually develops at birth so it then continues to develop until we're about three or three to four years of age so although our gut microbiota I think it's a word of the day. It is hard coded, so to speak. It actually evolves as we uh, adapt and as we age. So factors such as genetics, family environment, age, stress, diet, lifestyle, all, con all contribute to establishing our gut flora. So in a nutshell, when we strengthen our gut bacteria, it strengthens our immune system and it makes us a little bit more resistant to catching colds, flus and viruses. So our special guest tonight, Marie-France Laval, dietitian, nutritionist, home economic, I can't say that word, pronounce it for me. Um, <laughs> Yes, and counsellor will be sharing tips on how we can actually do this. Murray is uh, the founder and CEO of Fussy Eater Solutions and offers a range of online programs um, to help support fussy eaters and their families. And Marie uh, will be sharing her top three um, tips to help boost our children's immune system. So how are you doing tonight? I'm very good. How are you, Rachel? I'm really, really excited to be chatting with you. We've got lots to cover tonight. And so before we get stuck into all of our chat, you know, we published your article, Three Best Ways to Boost Your Child's Immune System. For someone who hasn't read the article, can you give us a little bit of an overview and just what inspired you to write it? Well, I don't want to start writing about, you know, having more vitamin C or zinc for winter. I want you really to get back to what, um, to how the immune system is built from birth. So um, I'm really passionate about the gut flora. I took part into a, a trial years ago uh, with Monash actually was a guinea pig in the trial to look at my own gut flora. It's something that is really, really interesting. Yeah, and I um, before we get stuck into the questions, I just wanted to take a chunk out of the article because there's lots of really fa fascinating information in there. Now you mentioned scientists are working uh, to show us how the brain and the immune system and the gut um, which is stomach flora, all actually work together as a team. So to put it simply, the bacteria that our children are harboring in their gut from birth is informing and training their immune system in its development day after day. So can you tell us just a little bit more about that because it's quite fascinating. It is quite fascinating. Actually, there's recent research that says that in the, in the placenta, there may also be microbes. So uh, it's not a sterile environment as was previously thought, but nevertheless, when the child is born through a vaginal birth, they are going to ingest quite a quantity of microbes. And these are the microbes that their mother is harboring. Um, and so these are going to colonize the baby's guts and these are going to inform the immune system. So it's a, it's a collaboration that starts really early on these microbes are getting there in small quantity. The immune system is starting to recognize them and so um, to associate with them, to tolerate them. And that's building strong gut barrier as well, which is so important for a healthy immune system. All right, cool. Well, let's get stuck into the three key questions. And I'm really excited to see how we connect what our gut flora is from when we're younger to, to as we get older and how that sort of can help sort of foster that immune system. So the, question number three, let's get stuck into it. How does the gut flora get colonized? So through um, birth, but potentially before birth, as I've said, um, in the placenta. Um, and so a vaginal birth is really the way to go if you can, um, because you get all these, um, this ingestion of microbes. Um, Babies who are born by C-section are not getting the same microbes. They get um, microbes that are usually on the skin and in the environmental uh, environment of the birth, um, around the birth time. But basically, um, once a mother breastfeeds, she's going to pass on more microbes to the baby. 
um, and they are going to um, ingest microbial foods as they go into uh, eating solids. Right, and I think um, mentioned earlier on sort of the, so this this the microbes come from the placenta, or can you maybe explain? Do you know where about where, where that where, where they come from? It just as a general question. Uh, we've it was thought that the placenta was sterile, but now some research is saying that's not the case. No vaginal birth. It's you know basically uh, rectal and vaginal uh, flora that gets delivered to babies. Yeah. It's a bit yeah. So, 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 so we're actually born with so, so once like once we, we've arrived um and then from the, from the first four years so we we're developing that that gut flora is that what it is and that's how it gets colonized would you say? So it gets colonized with this ingestion to start with yep. and yep. then food foods so breast milk definitely is going to provide more live bacteria and then all fermented foods are going to provide uh, live bacteria and then the foods that we eat are going to. Uh, provide food for the bacteria itself to grow and thrive and develop. All right, cool. Well, I think that leads us perfectly to question number two. So, you now why is it so important to develop a healthy gut flora from an early age? So, because there's heaps and heaps of research that associates a disturbed, if you like, gut flora, which is dysbiosis, it's called dysbiosis, a disturbed gut flora to a variety of diseases. So um, obesity, um, uh, diabetes type 2, some cancers, there's some autoimmune diseases, there's so much happening, there's so much science at the moment, so much research, and what is going to happen over the next 10, 15 years is going to be fascinating. All right, cool. Well, it is very so let's get stuck into question number three that all sort of flow. So the question is, how can we maintain a healthy gut flora? How can we ma maintain it? So the very simple answer is food. Food. So, um, of course, we can buy probiotics through the counter, um, but if we eat fermented foods and really the simple, simple food to eat every day or provide our kids with every day is yogurt. <laughs> yogurt contains live bacteria. So if we provide these foods, and I've listed quite a few foods in my uh, article for Kidipedia, yeah. then we are providing our kids with beneficial bacteria that is going to add up to the colonization of the gut. And that's going to provide, to replenish, if you like, the gut flora. And all throughout our lives, we should aim to to eat these uh, fermented foods, because also there's ample research to say that some particular um, um, group of people who eat these foods are shown to be very healthy. So, yeah, so eating that's... fermented food is definitely one way to provide healthy bacteria into our guts. Fermented foods are yogurt, some cheeses, um, some Asian foods like uh, kimchi. Um, and then you know, everybody these days drink kombucha. Kombucha. Uh, yeah, kombucha. Um, but basically fermented foods and then prebiotics. So prebiotics are the food that these live bacteria are going to thrive on. And so prebiotics are a type of fiber. And so they come in all sorts of foods that I've listed also in the article, but that are so easy for anyone to add on to their menus from tomorrow. And so they will be like um, um, some beans, snow peas, sweet corn. And I've basically got the list from Monash Uni because Monash Uni, and I've linked the article, has, gone into, has done so much research into this. Um, but it's not just the vegetables, it's also legumes like chickpeas, lentils, beans, uh, it's also uh, fruit like uh, nectarines, peaches, um, some bread, some cereals, some, um, so barley is a good one, a good cereal, and you can buy barley wraps for sandwiches, but you can buy also rye crackers and rye bread, and then very simply pasta, wholemeal pasta, gnocchi, couscous, um, there's a lot to, um, to use. Uh, in the most basic forms, of the, the most basic um, food um, to provide our bacteria with um, something to thrive on, some food to thrive on. 
So, so what you've got as the, as the prebiotics are food that nourish the, the beneficial bacteria um, um, presented in the gut. So you're saying, according to Monash University, the vegetables that we should have is uh, Jeru Jerusalem artichokes, chicory, garlic, onion, leek, shallots, spring onions, asparagus, beetroot, fennel bulb, uh, green peas, snow peas, uh, sweet corn and savoury cabbage. The fruit that you mentioned is custard apples, yum. Nectarines, white peaches, um, you've got watermelon, grapefruit, there's a whole list there. Um, and then you've got all of your, um, like your, your chickpeas, your lentils, your red lentils, your baked beans and soybeans, woohoo, uh, soy. Um, and then bread and cereals, so like you said before, you've got your barley, your rye bread, your rye crackers, pasta, gnocchi, couscous, wheat bran, um, and oats, and then your nuts and seeds, cashews, and pistachio nuts. So there's a whole heap there, which pretty much we could eat on a daily basis, and that's going to be constantly sort of, um, I guess, sort of generating that beneficial bacteria in our stomach and in our children's stomachs, would you say? Yeah, so I wouldn't say these are the only foods we want to aim for. These are part of a variety of foods we can eat. It doesn't mean that all you eat is prebiotics, um, prebiotic fiber. You eat a lot of other fiber through other fruit, vegetables and grains, but they should be part of what you eat. Yep. And so just to clarify just um, what you were saying earlier on, so the probiotics, um, which, you, as you mentioned before, which you can actually purchase over the counter, is a live microorganism um, and that can be sort of either through the tablet form and or this is something that we can sort of take every day as well. Um, would you say that that's something that you would recommend for people to do? There is two camps really on this now. So probiotics are supposed to be really safe um, to take. Um, and yes, they are something by over the counter, and they are called probiotics because they um, have been shown to actually um, provide the benefit a benefit to the host, so you as you take them. But we um, what we don't know yet, and once some scientists are saying we don't know what the long term of, um, use of probiotics will yield. We don't know whether the standards, because it's not a medication, so the, whether the standards guarantee that there's no over bacteria getting in the mix. So some scientists are saying we should be a bit careful, which is why I really want to say, just go for those natural foods that you eat and that we have eaten for thousands of years that have, that have proven to be very safe and very efficient in providing good gut flora. So the three top tips really is um, to be able to have our prebiotics, which is all the fruit and vegetables, which are listed in the article, the fermented foods, which you mentioned early on, which is a yogurt and things like um, sauerkraut. Um, and there's even some um, things like cheeses and a whole heap of different foods, which you list in the article. And the third thing would be sort of a probiotic um, as well to all, all to sort of help sort of, um, sort of replenish and sort of foster that healthy gut flora. Would they be the three things, I guess? Yeah, but the two most important would be the first two ones. Which is the, 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 the prebiotics. Yes, which is through the food. Yeah. And just one last question, which I'm sure a lot of people would love to sort of maybe just clarify, you know, but we would love to know as a dietitian and nutritionist, um, what's your view on taking vitamin supplements to help boost immunity? It said that like the, the top three immune boosting vitamins are like vitamin C, uh, vitamin B6 and vitamin E. Um, I think I can sort of preempt what your answer is going to be <laughs> as a dietitian, <laughs> but I just wanted to ask, um, asking for a friend. You know, but <laughs> two years ago, everybody was really into something called vitam vitamin therapy, um, and um, it's been sort of a you know uh, criticized since because what happens is vitamins in food seem to work in synergy with other compounds, and so what works best is your food. And I know sometimes we feel better when we buy some stuff over the counter, and we think that is going to help us then boost us. But overall, there's more evidence that having varied foods, a good lifestyle, if you, if you like, is going to be beneficial. And I know it can be tough, and I know it can be tough particularly with parents who have children who are very fussy eaters. Yes. Well, look, I think what you've given us has been some really incredible insights and, you know, expertise tonight. So for everybody watching, um, by all means, um, 
click on the, the link at the bottom of the introduction paragraph, have a read of the article um, to grab these tips. And I always think in life, work smarter, not harder. And if we can sort of help prevent um, as much as possible, um, you know, any sort of coughs, colds, the best way to do this is to look after our immune system, to feed lots of, as, as Marie France said, our fresh fruit and vegetables, uh, but most importantly, help try to sort of flourish that, that gut bacteria. And uh, I think, you know, when we're healthier, we're just happier. Don't you think at the end of the day that's the most important thing so look thank you so much for your time again and if any parents have got any questions for you whereabouts can they find you so they can find me on facebook uh, at Facile, um, or solutions or instagram or they can find my website um, facilita.com.au absolutely perfect thank you so much for your time tonight can't wait to, uh, to catch up with you again take care Bye. <laughs>